Why does an elephant use his trunk as a bookmark? Because he always knows when to stop reading. I'm Valina and welcome to the first episode of reviewing books from the Women's Fiction Book Prize. A couple weeks ago, I was scrolling through my Goodreads as one does on our Saturday between the wild, non-existent student life. I found that I've read quite a few of these winners already. Were the books always good? <laughs> No. So here I am talking about the book that no one is talking about, Patricia Lockwood's Internet Archive. It's on this year's shortlist and this series will now be a thing. Will I be doing other awards? Well, since I'm clearly so busy doing social things, of course I will. <laughs> Anyways, let's finally spill the tea on this one. The volume inside this video will be astronomical. If my usage of slang annoys you, then you're probably not going to like this book. See what I did there. It's a short novel about internet culture. And you might be thinking, wow, that's sophisticated. That's so sophisticated. But it's not quite what you think it is. Just remember that it's fiction. So if you're expecting an explanation of why sneeze when it's spelled with an A instead of an E is funnier, wouldn't we all like to know? This is the story of the main character who's a social media influencer and she's on this thing called the portal and it's kind of like Instagram except she's constantly having an existential crisis over who's controlling her. I'm not talking about Facebook moms sending emojis that they don't quite know the meaning of. Not talking about the random source tweets about every character in existence. I'm talking about everything. From the meme of the Caucasian guy blinking, to the darkest timeline, to the threat of women all realizing they have the same scar on their knees, to spelling thick with a C, to the galaxy meme, to dark stock photos, to guess I'll die. I'm talking about everything. This book honestly seems a bit like an elaborate joke because it reads like an artsy documentary type thing, I'll read a bit. The problem was that the dictator was very funny, which had maybe always been true of all dictators. Absurdism, she thought. Suddenly all those Russian novels where a man turns into a teaspoonful of blackberry jam at a country house began to make sense. Then we then, then we then, three dots signifying a new fragment. What had the beautiful thought been? The bright profundity she had roused herself to write down. She opened her notebook with the sense of anticipation she always felt on such occasions. Perhaps this would finally be it, the one they would chisel on her gravestone. It read, Chuck E. Cheese can munch a hole in my you-know-what. Okay. Then later we get a list of all the things that are always there, aka the sun and that theme song of the mannequins coming alive in that department store. You have not read fragmented stories until you pick this one up. Someone should go back to the past, change the definition from fragmented to no one is talking about this. Is this an allegory to how our attention spans have decreased? Or or was it just simply too hard to spread all these events together so the author just put like three squares, made them look like pixels and said I did that? I don't know. For me, it did sound authentic and like a real Twitter feed with all these things put out of context and just randomly there. And I guess it drove the plot forward, although ironically there isn't much of a plot. I got into a discussion of this book recently with a friend and they didn't like this whole fragmented thing at all. And I have to agree, by the end it really really grates on you. If you're like an emotional boomer and you don't get the references, mother trucker if you remember that that hurts i suggest googling it and to fight the internet was the internet speaking of social media as if i haven't been doing it this entire time most books about the internet tend to tell us about impending doom or insult the user's intelligence maybe say it's all a government conspiracy and our thoughts are controlled by the media Certainly, the internet has its fair share of strange people, people who believe in flat earth. I still don't get why you haven't fallen off the edge of the world once you've been hit in with facts from the scientific community. But the internet is fun and that's why you are using it right now. I see you. And this book felt like a tribute to it. Social media connects us. Yes, it makes us compare ourselves. Yes. 
Sometimes we have an existential crisis like the MC about going back to real life TM and there's not really that many ways for us to preserve this kind of history. In 200 years, who's going to remember the cat and the salad and the lady? More importantly, how if all forms of social media that we have today will be wiped out. I don't know if it will happen, but it might be. It can be the start of a new friendship. These memes, they kind of connect us. It's like, you know, you're sitting there, oh, you haven't seen this funny video? Give me your phone, I'll, I'll send it to you. Oh, wait, I don't have your snap, let me add you. Bam, the beginning of a new friendship. Occasionally, we promise to delete Instagram, maybe we will, but seeing as there is currently no alternative, to another social media that allows you to talk to random people online. In the portal, there's a feeling like you can't get out. And it's very similar to social media. Like sure, it's lighthearted and fun until gasp. Mass genocides rip through the, the virtual peace that we have created as an illusion to ourselves. When she set the portal down, the thread tugged her back towards it. She could not help following it. This might be the one that connected everything, that would knit her to an indestructible coherence. I may have issues with the book, which I am about to get to benches, but I will forever admire Patricia Lockwood for the things that she did manage to pull off, like I do with other authors. The unnamed character is sarcastic and humorous and pseudo-deep in just a really amusing way. She calls people out on being deep. She calls herself out and others like her. And I thought that was pretty funny because you know what, English teachers, sometimes it's not that deep. Maybe the curtains are blue, not to represent the main character's crippling depression, but to show, I don't know, to like match with the rest of the house. You get these bursts of delightful wit, but that's the first half. But by the second part, the entire thing changes. Look, I am not judging the character for the way that she deals with her grief, but it just feels like an entirely different book. Maybe it was meant to show the disparity between real life and the internet, but the author just spent a hundred pages paying homage to what's around us right now, just at the end to be like, goodbye. It felt forced. And then we get surface level philosophical and it really clashes. The whole thing feels like a terrible fever dream because then you start asking yourself questions. Was the first half really as good as I thought it was? You look back and you're like, how could I have enjoyed this? And it's a constant question. Huge no. Thanks for the tribute, but maybe this should have been a blog post. Now this book showed what it's like trapped in your feed on the homepage, like an aged version of the hungry caterpillar. It was also rather filled with cliches, with the first half being, yay, so good. The second half being like, so bad. The yeah, second half, we really cast it away. By the end, I have a feeling that I still don't fully understand what happened. And guess what? This is going to be an unpopular opinion. I just really did not find this book to be revolutionary. Sure, the format was great and I'm glad I read this book. But I'm so sorry. If this wins, I am going to be furious because it was weak. It's not the sharp, poignant internet critique that you were expecting and by you, I mean I. The second part that was more plot-driven didn't really get any emotions out of me because it just clashed so badly the whole thing was disconcerting. Today's review was rather short and not as in-depth so I apologize. Wow, what you might be feeling right now is what I'm feeling about this book. Now all we're missing is a bunch of comments on whether this review was meta or neo or a bunch of other words of uncertain meaning or just throw bad comments at it. Literally, this is what this book is. Either it's a genius or it should be on a burning pile like my trouble on TikTok. I'll end with a few more snippets of what to expect. Ah ha ha! <laughs> ah ha ha ha! She yelled, the new and funnier way to laugh. That's actually true and cements my belief that the author spends 24-7 on the internet. Why had she entered the portal in the first place? Because she wanted to be a creature of pure call and response. She wanted to delight and to be delighted. I hope you decide to stay for more of my women's fiction reviews, which will hopefully go better than whatever this was. I am still figuring out the days that I will post them because I will be doing it alongside my usual content on Sunday, but expect either Wednesday or Thursday. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please stick around. <laughs>